This episode of Grilled by the Staff Canteen is sponsored by Westlands, the premier specialist British grower of microleaf, growing cresses, edible flowers, inspired leaves, sea herbs and specialty tomatoes. Visit www.westlandsuk.co.uk to find out more. Thanks for listening to Grilled. We talk to the UK's best chefs every week, so make sure you follow us so you don't miss out on the latest episode. My name is Cara, editor of The Staff Canteen, and this week we chat to Eduardo Pelicano, the executive head chef of Mausch at the Blue Mountain School in Shoreditch, London. The son of an Italian chef and Singaporean food lover, he has worked at renowned restaurants like Locanda Locatelli, trained with the likes of Leandro Carrera, spent time in the research and development team at Noma, and was part of the founding team at Portland alongside Merlin LeBron Johnson. He helped launch Mausch, a fine dining 16 seat, 16 course menu dining experience, and it received its first star in the Michelin Guide UK 2020. Our deputy editor, Tani, went to the restaurant to speak to Eduardo to find out more. Hello everyone, today we are in London Shoreditch at Mausch with chef Eduardo Pelicano uh, to have a chat about the restaurant here. Hi Eduardo, how are you? Hey, I'm good thanks, how are you? (laughs) Not too bad, thank you. Okay, so this feature, Chefs to Watch, is uh, a focus on you and how you got to where you are today mm-hmm. uh, to give our chefs a little bit of inspiration and just to, just to tell them your story. So yeah. um, I think a lot of people are aware of, of you and, and know about your background, but um, just to give people a little bit of an insight, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about that. Yeah, of course. About that. Go for it. So you were, you were basically born into restaurants, so yes. dad owned a restaurant when you were small and you grew up. Yeah, sitting around tables with the brigade, and yeah. so you you basked in restaurants. Yeah, as a as a young child, what was that like? Was it like having a big, slightly dysfunctional family? Um, <laughs> I don't want to say dysfunctional. <laughs> I, it was it was. Um, I think I think I think I was I think I was very lucky to to be to have um, to have two parents from very mm-hmm. different backgrounds, mm-hmm. but have such incredible love for food and passion for food. So, so that was so that was pretty so that was pretty amazing. Um, um, the di- the diversity, cooking a lot at home, and then obviously yeah, obviously so going to going to my dad's going to my dad's restaurant and eating eating with all the chefs was definitely one of my highlights of the week when I was a when I was a young boy. <laughs> and so your mum was from Singapore, is that right? Yes, yeah. yes. So my mum's from Singapore, and my dad is from Italy. He's from the south of Italy. And how much of an influence was uh, your mother's cooking on on what you learn about food? Uh, my mum's a terrible cook, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, hopefully not that much. But uh, um, it was my mum's influence, not not so much. Um, I mean, I think her, her sorry, her cooking not so much, but taking me out. Um, to, to eat in these in these lovely restaurants definitely definitely helped. Yeah. My dad is a big cook, so yeah. I, th- I think he he probably is he's probably the most influential person yeah. in uh, in my career. Well, there's nothing wrong with passing on the love for eating out. I think I sit no. I definitely sit on in that category. Of <laughs> can't cook, love to eat out. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. I, th- I think that's where it starts as well. I think I think as as, as most chefs, I think you need to it, you know. It wasn't. It wasn't always my my goal to be a chef, Mm-mm. but I love to eat, and I think that's kind of where where it started. Yeah. Did you? It, was there ever anything else that you considered as a career? Did you ever think that you were going to do anything else? Um. No. <laughs> Not no. Nothing legal. <laughs> no. I, no. No. There, there. There wasn't really. I mean, I, I think I kind of. So. Um, um, my, my, me and my dad moved to Rome where mm-hmm. he opened up t- two other restaurants and I was in school and um, kind of dropped out and was just, wasn't, just wasn't enjoying it anymore and um, he told me just to get in the kitchen and, uh, and just do something and yeah. I was like yeah this is actually, this is actually quite fun this is alright um, and then from there I was like well I kind of miss although, although my parents are not from, not from London London is, I feel like it's my home. So I kind of wanted to, wanted to move back and pursue that career. Yeah. You travelled to other parts as well. You spent some time in the Nordics as well. Yes. 
Uh, was that like, just for a learning curve's purposes? Did you always know that you were going to come back to London? Um, um, it, it was, it was, of course it was to learn, it was to, it was to, it was to, it was to increase my knowledge. Um, I was very, very, very curious about what they, what they do at NOMA. And um, I was very, very fortunate to be in the research and development um, kitchen team. Um, but yes, I think, I think in the back of my mind it was, it was, I knew I wasn't gonna s stay there forever. I always had in my mind that I would, I would come back to London. There was a, the reason that I came back to London was to, was to, um, was to open Portland yeah. with, uh, with Merlin. Um, so yeah, that was the reason that I came back. Yeah, but wow, that, it must have been amazing being part of the R&D team at no. Oh, it was crazy. Yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing. It was amazing. I, th I think, although, although, I, although I was there for a short time, I was only, um, I was only there for like um, a couple of months. It was, I took a lot from there that w wasn't necessarily so much um, about, f about the food, yeah. but it was like the way of work, the method, the, method, the, the pressure. Um, that was, yeah, that was huge for me too. When I, when I, I felt like when I walked away from, when I walked away from them and I came, when I came to Portland, I felt uh, more confident, highly yeah. confident. Yeah. But uh, again, being part of the founding team at Portland must have been something. Yeah, that was, that was crazy. <laughs> that was, that was crazy. I mean, I think, I think it's, I think it's always, I think you always feel a bit more, um, attached to a restaurant when you're, when you're there from the start, when you yeah. open it get a sense of ownership of it. Yeah, you get a sense of ownership of it. And I think that was, that was a, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a, it was a crazy journey. And um, it was the first time I was, I, I'd never met Merlin before as well. Mm -hmm. And um, we, luckily we got along really, really well. And it was just, yeah, just amazing to see it, to see it grow. Yeah. Really, really incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and now you're here at Marosh, so uh, opened about April last year. Yeah. Something about this place is that it's quite, um, or at least when you launched it, yeah. you kept it under wraps. There was quite a lot of secrecy and, and sort of mystery around it. Yeah. Why was that? I think it was. I think it was to. I think it was to give. Um, I think it was to. I, I think there's so. I think there's. I think there's so many restaurants that you go to now that. Even before, even before you book, you you know the experience already. Mm. You go on the Instagram, you know every single dish that you're gonna have, you know you're gonna eat. Um, reviews come out and basically just tells you everything about the restaurant. So I feel like you've you've basically had the experience before you even walked in, or you have a perception of what the experience is going to be. And I think perceptions can be quite quite dangerous. Yeah, I think a lot of I've seen a lot of restaurants like for example. Um, uh, a restaurant called Ikoi. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm good friends with, with Jeremy, and we have quite a lot of quite a lot of chats about when they when they were first opening. Obviously, they got labelled as this yeah. um, like classical Nigerian restaurant, and they didn't say that. There was nothing that they said. It was just somebody that came in and just wrote wrote something about yeah. them, and then people, the diners were actually going there and and being like, "What the hell? This is not." And this is not an African restaurant. They're like, yeah, we never said it was. So I think there was there was part of that. It was part of just being like, you you just have no idea what you're gonna walk into. And I kind of love that feeling. Yeah. Kind of like, <laughs> it's, it's quite weird. I kind of like I kind of like looking at the guest guest face when they come in and they walk into the kitchen. They're just like, what the hell <laughs> is going on? And they feel as I was saying to you before. You know, we we always welcome guests into the kitchen, and. You know, I think it can be a moment where some people might feel a little bit awkward, mm -hmm. but inside me, I'm always like, don't worry, it's going to be okay. But I think the whole point of doing that is to kind of get that awkwardness out of the way. So I think the reason, yeah, sorry, going back to the question, the reason why we did do that was just to keep everything really as, as much of a surprise as possible. Yeah, it gives it like a natural feel. Exactly. It's sort of anything where there's an expectation, there's room for disappointment. Exactly. Yeah. Correct. And um, I mean, the the building itself mm -hmm. is quite an interesting one. So it's the Blue Mountain School. Mm -hmm. 
which is shrouded in history. It's like an 18th, 19th century building. Mm -hmm. And this uh, this room used to be the the staff kitchen. Yeah. So it really has an atmosphere of you feel like you're in someone's house. Yeah. And ha like, how do you integrate that into the experience that you deliver to to your guests? Yeah. So so the kitchen that we work in was was actually the um, what you can call it the, the staff canteen. <laughs> hey. Um, I think the setup was a little bit different to what we have now. <laughs> I think we we uh, we adjusted that slightly. But I think there's yeah there is there is that feeling that you're you're walking you're walking into our into our home, you know. And I think that um, you know I was saying before that giving giving the guests the freedom to to move around the space kind of creates that have have chats in the kitchen with the chefs, um, but also not forced, mm -hmm. right? So it's um, which I think which I think is is the beauty of it as well is is that when you when you come for a long tasting menu. You know, one of these kind of long tasting menus. You usually have to sit in your seat for like three hours, yeah. and it can get quite boring. And I think being able to have the choice um, to move around the space mm. is is great. Yeah, you know, makes you feel more comfortable. Yeah, it makes you feel more comfortable. It's like I mean, I think I think it happens to everybody when you go for these kind of, as I said, these long tasting menus. You're like really like stretch my legs yeah. and the only place you can really do that is like walking to the toilet <laughs> so here it's like well do you know what have a little walk come to the kitchen and watch us watch us prepare your next dish um if it's not such a temperature sensitive dish you can eat it in the kitchen with us <laughs> um or like have a smoke on the balcony and watch us cook um but it's it's a choice and it's yeah. not forced yeah. which i think is which i think is important do you ever have any guests get too much in the way <laughs> um, not really, actually. I mean, there was, <laughs> was there was one guest that had, had a few too many glasses of wine, and <laughs> and yeah, as you do, and <laughs> I wanted to I wanted to help me blowtorch some bone marrow. I thought that was a good idea, <laughs> but I think in general, uh, generally, I mean, the the guests are quite quite respective of of what we do. Um, especially, <laughs> I'll tell you what, this is, this is actually quite a good one. So two weeks ago, um, this, is when, this is when I realized we had to keep, we have to keep a closer eye on what's going on when the guests are inside the kitchen. <laughs> one of the guests leant on the, on the oven oh. and turned, so we had, we had like our beautiful lobsters inside. And we cook our lobsters very slowly, so it must be like, we cook our lobsters like 48 degrees. All right. So she leaned back, hit the oven, and whacked up to 250 degrees. Oh, no. <laughs> that could uh, be a very expensive mistake. Yeah, no, it, was, it, it definitely, definitely was, and, it, and um, we, we managed to recover well. Luckily, <laughs> luckily, luckily, the lobsters were the only thing there in the oven. Oh, God. But, um, so, yeah, so there, there are moments like that where you do, you do have to, you do have to keep, uh, just keep an eye on what's going on. I think, you, I think we want to we wanna have this homely feel, and, yeah. you know, you can... You know, feel free to walk around us and ask questions, but also we're we're doing the job. Yeah, and um, yeah, we have to keep an eye on that. Mm -hmm. I suppose it's the risk of an experience like this, which is so close to a dinner party that you know you have perfectly civilized dinner parties, and then sometimes yeah. you invite your slightly wacky friend. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah exactly. And continuously break glasses. Yeah, exactly, break. exactly. Yeah, that definitely happens. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm kind of curious as to like what, who are your typical guests and, and how, I suppose, do you market this place now? Mm -hmm. um, typical guests, it's, it's a hard one because they, every, guest, every guest is different. Yeah. Um, and that is, that is kind of one of, the, one of the challenges that we face every single night is that... <clears throat> You're serving sixteen guests that potentially want sixteen different experiences. Yeah. So um, I would say, yeah, I would say it's, it's a mixture. You know, I think I think some people seem some people come here because they they really want to um, engage in with the experience. Will come to the kitchen, talk to the chefs, and just yeah, they really really take on the experience. And then I think you have some guests that. Um, are here because they heard that we got a star. Yeah. They want to come check it out. Yeah. So I would say I would say there's there's a uh, there's definitely um, there's there's not just one there's not just one type of guest. Mm -mm. 
it's always, it's always different every single night. That's what, that's what keeps it exciting. You just mentioned that you got a star, so we can move on to that subject. Yeah. How did it feel to get that? Yeah. Letter? Did you get a letter? Did you get a phone call? Did yeah, you get yeah. an invitation? Yeah, yeah, we did. We did. We got an invitation, and I think um, we were just yeah, we were over the moon. Um, did you expect it? Did you see it coming? Um, I think we deserved it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I wouldn't say I was 100% certain that we were going to get it just because of the style uh, the, the format of the restaurant mm. it, it kind of feels like it's uh, kind of anti <laughs> anti Michelin but it is something that we believe in so I think that was that was the greatest thing is that achieving achieving that accolade in doing um, something that we believe in yeah. and not just like um, selling out or just trying to tick the boxes in order to get this accolade meant so much more. And the guys work so, so hard. And um, it was, yeah, it was, it was an amazing, amazing moment. And did you know that they'd been? Did they at any point announce themselves or? Yes, yeah. yes. So um, they, they announced themselves the first time, the first time they came. Yeah. Um, and then they said they'd be back. And it's, it's quite, it's quite interesting. It's quite an interactive experience. So. Yeah. Talk, you talk quite a lot to uh, to guests. So, yeah. Um, so you probably get more out of Michelin inspectors than most chefs. I think so. <laughs> I think I knew who they were. I think I, I think I knew who they were, but I, I can't I can't be sure. And have you sort of did you expect it at any point that you'd get? Not saying other awards, but were you more expecting to end up on different kinds of lists, like the fifty best or or ones that are sort of looking towards more modern concepts mm -hmm. um was i expecting it again i i wouldn't say i wouldn't say i was expecting it. i think we i think we're definitely i think we're definitely capable of getting on that list um and it's definitely something that um, I'm, I'm striving for this year um i de we're definitely not just gonna sit sit on the star and just be happy and play it safe we're we um constantly changing things being aggressive looking at new techniques always 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 trying to get better uh, we were on the we were on the um, opinionated about dining list mm -hmm. um, which is another international which is which is great um, so yeah that, that is definitely something that I want, I want us to I want us to aim for this year for sure. so I want to dial back and ask a few more questions about about yourself and and your decisions as a chef yeah uh, and I guess having spoken about the, the restaurant here, I, or what I want to know is why you sort of chose to go down the route that you did, why you didn't stay in the sort of, air quote, normal restaurant yeah. sort of um, milieu and decided to, to, to come down this more unconventional route. Yeah, I, 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 enjoy, I, I enjoy interactions yeah. with the guests. Yeah. I enjoy that. I, there's... It's quite a few restaurants that I've that I've worked in that have, that have um, that uh, that chefs serve you know, come out of the kitchen serve dishes serve dishes to guests and I enjoy that a lot I think this I think that is um, it's very rewarding mm -hmm. being able to speak to the guests and talking about dishes that you've created and what their opinions are and I think apart from that just being able to be creative. Yeah. Like cook, cook creatively with no with no limits, no bounds, and just do whatever do whatever I want, do whatever we want. So um, it's hard hard to find hard to find a space where you can actually do that. Yeah. And um, yeah, amazing amazing that amazing that uh, an opportunity like this came came along. And I think that having a and then doing it for sixteen guests a night is pretty special. Yeah. You can really, really just focus, just put everything into sixteen plates, and you know that's you know that's 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 all you're gonna serve. Sixteen dishes, um, sorry, sixteen plates with sixteen guests. That's it. So um, yeah, just being able to focus on that and not just being, not just there to like turn up food, but really, really having that detail. Yeah, I suppose that sort of answers my next question, but. Really, what I want to know is what what drives you. What do you want to get out of 
this this career really is it do you, do you enjoy the craftsmanship do you, is it really flavors is it making people happy is it surprising people what is it that makes you get up in the morning yeah i, I think i think it's i think it's um all of, all, of, all, of, all, of, all of the above. I mean, I think um, being being um, being creative um, is 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 definitely one of one of um, my biggest pleasures on this job. Um, yeah, seeing people happy, seeing I mean, seeing people um, eating our food, things that we've been working on for such a long time. I think also um, working with um, my team. Yeah. Um, the boys in the kitchen uh, I've worked with them in different places for quite a while and seeing and also seeing seeing them grow mm-hmm. um, is 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 quite it's quite rewarding yeah. is it is that a certain closeness that you don't think that you'd be able to have elsewhere oh you mean because of this format yeah um, I, I think it's I think it's I think it's harder when you I think it's harder when you have a a larger scaled kitchen, yeah. Because, um, yeah, everybody, everybody's spread out. Whereas, obviously, in our kitchen, it's 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 so close, it's so tight. I mean, it can it can be it can be a bit annoying sometimes <laughs> being yeah. that close to everyone for for uh, for five days. You have to you have to know. <laughs> yeah, they got me. They got me. The, they, got me the, they got me the right people because yeah. you know you're going to be spending spending a lot of time. And it's not just like in the same building. It's like literally right next to them. <laughs> but. Um, it's yeah. It's um. It, it it definitely does help. I think I think I think it's it's just, it's like a, we're like a family. Yeah. And so just to touch upon the food a little bit, I know it, I, I I don't really want to make you define what it is that you do, mm-hmm. but maybe talk to me about the influences and the things that you enjoy to do at the moment in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Exactly. I, I don't think we, I don't think we should just pin it down to. To, um, there's no point in pigeonholing it. Yeah, because... there's not. There's not, and I and I think and there's, I think that's that reflects our food in terms of, and the way we cook is that allowing ourselves to be free. Yeah. And um, I think there's I think there's influences from definitely past, past past working experiences. Also, I think um, growing up experiences. Yeah. Like flavors, flavors, flavors that we eat when growing up. Um, and just and just incorporating that into our our unique style, um, I think that um, yeah, I think that it's um, it's also it's also trying to find it's also trying to find um, I mean what excites me is find, trying to find unusual combinations, mm-hmm. um, but making them tasty. If yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So so not making things. I, I think like. Five years ago, the way I used to the way I used to think about food is that it has it had to be super weird. Mm-hmm. Everything everything has to be weird, mm-hmm. crazy, um, in order for it to be servable. And as interesting that might be to a chef, mm-hmm. when I actually was tasting this food, I was actually thinking this isn't actually tasty. Mm-hmm. This is just weird. So I, th- I think that if you can, for me, I think that. If you have that balance in your tasting menu, where you can have um, have some comfort, yeah, you know, some creativity, a little bit of weirdness, a little bit of a challenge, a little bit of a somewhere. challenge, but having a balance is important. You know, I think even like when you if, when you structure the menu, if you if you have a dish which is quite challenging, you follow it by something which is a little bit comforting, mm-hmm. so the guest feels feels like uh, a little bit at ease again before you before you um, give them something challenging again. Yeah, and what's your typical feedback from from guests? Like, what do they leave here saying? Well, I mean, I don't know if they're telling the truth, but they seem to like it. <laughs> yeah. It's quite, I mean, it'd be quite hard to. We're, we're so close to be like, oh, yeah, it's, it's rubbish. Bye. <laughs> no, no, but like in terms of the the not whether it was good or bad. Yeah. What do they say about it? Like, what does, what are their um, generally positive? Yeah. yeah, and I think I think this I think. What I just said, that message really comes across, um, which is, which is great to hear. Like it's it's so nice. It's so nice when people get it. Mm-hmm. You know, when they say, "Oh, you know, like you know, there's it was challenging, but then everything was just really, really tasty." You're like, great, 
that yeah. is that is exactly what we're trying to do. So at least that's that's coming across correctly. Great. And I mean, from the sounds of it, you're pretty busy here at the moment. But do you still get the time to eat out? And is when you eat out, do you seek out places that are like this? Um, no. <laughs> if I'm being honest, um, I I prefer to I, I, I prefer to eat comfort food. Yeah. On. Uh, on my days off um if i'm being honest i'll try not to cook okay i usually go out yeah um i think that's like a lot of chefs yeah <laughs> yeah it is and it, i mean there's, there's there's some guys some chefs that i speak to that are like yeah you know like cooking all weekend i'm like how <laughs> <laughs> i there's something it's, it's not how but it's just something that like i just I really enjoy being looked after yeah like going yeah after you look after people for five days a week it's uh, four nights a week it's um it's so nice that you can just go to a restaurant just relax sit down and have people like top up your wine clear your plates it's just it's just it feels feels so nice yeah um you're asking where where would, where do i like to go i re- i really like um i love going to the laughing heart mm-hmm. i go there probably a little bit too much tom Tom might get a bit, <laughs> gets a little bit annoyed. Sit you in the, in the corner. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I love going there. I love going there because it's, it's exactly what I want. I want to feel, I want to feel comfortable. He makes me, he always, feel, he always makes me very, very comfortable. Serves, yeah. serves me delicious food, yeah. and amazing wine. Great wine list, yeah. Yeah, great wine list. Um, I think another one is Black Axe Mangal. Mm-hmm. Is fun. Yeah. Super, super fun. Um, uh, the Sea, the Sea. Um, by Leo, I used to work with. I used to work with uh, Leo. I think he is. He he probably he probably is the. He's one of the best chefs I've ever I've ever worked with and worked for. Um, he's had a huge huge influence on the way I think about food and, and my career for sure. So um, I, I enjoy I enjoy seeing him and eating his food a lot. That's nice. Yeah. And you were talking about the um, the Laughing Hearts wine cellar, and that reminded me of the wine room that's here. Yeah. And the importance that you place on on wine here. Yeah. Uh, how did that that sort of weave into the the concept, and mm-hmm. how do you sort of ensure that everything that you do in the kitchen mm-hmm. is in line and in harmony with everything mm-hmm. that happens in there and, and I would say I would say we it's it's, it's uh, regular regular tastings yeah like, and, I, and I think this is it's part of our ethos as well there's there's a lot of restaurants where front of house and back of house there's just like this massive kind of uh, barrier and almost like animosity towards each other and I think it's ridiculous I think it's mm. like how how are you supposed to be this is this is this, you're supposed to, this is a team. It's a team effort. It's not just about one person. It's not just about two people. If you guys cannot come together, the the, the only the thing that you're jeopardizing is the guest experience. Yeah. So regular tastings when we have new dishes, when there's new wines around, I think I think um, uh, myself and Alex are, are very good at that. Um, he always likes to give me wine to drink which, which I do not decline. <laughs> <laughs> and then even when there's like even when I'm just working on something. Um, in the kitchen, if there's like a sauce going on or something like that, I just like call him over and just be like, oh, "Do you want to taste this?" And then it's, 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 it starts from that point. Then we then we kind of like we, you know we start talking, he starts thinking, he like he'll bring something, like we'll taste it together, and uh, yeah, it's a real, it's um it's a nice a nice nice teamwork that part. Yeah, yeah. sort of friendship. It's almost yeah. Like no, I mean I I've, I've known Alex for a very very long time, so we're we're, we're very very good friends, but um. Um, I think he he has he has he has an amazing amazing palate. Yeah. And um, yeah, I I value his opinion highly. Mm-hmm. And do you think you've both learned from it? So do you think that he now knows quite a lot about food, and you now know a lot about wine, or do you think to kind of leave it as this territory, trust him, and it ends up working? Hundred percent. I I mean I would say I would say probably I would say Alex knows. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I I didn't teach him food. That's for sure. Um, so I think I think maybe I think maybe what I think maybe he understands kind of the way that I'm cooking a little bit more now. Yeah. Um, in terms of wine, um, I'm not going to lie; I'm definitely not a wine expert. <laughs> so he's definitely taught me. It's a so lot difficult, about wine. isn't it? Yeah, it is, and it's one of those things where it's you like to drink it, but <laughs> I like to drink it, but I don't 
really have much knowledge. And I, and I want to, I want to learn about yeah. it. So it's, it's nice because um, Alex has that knowledge. So it's nice to, it's nice to engage with him and, 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 and learn and learn yeah. a bit more about wine. Yeah. It's probably almost in the same way that the public like the idea of being a chef. But yeah, exactly. The, That's exactly it. Like, how much work and how, <laughs> That's exactly how much like, it. treasure trove of information these people Yeah, have. yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. There's a difference between being a, a cook, a cook and a chef, isn't there? Yeah. Um, but, um, yeah. Great. And so, Marosh is in, obviously, a very good place. Mm -hmm. uh, have you got any plans to make any changes any time in the future? Mm -hmm. are, you, are you thinking about, you know pushing for anything different or like what what is your trajectory for the foreseeable the match? Um, I'm always I'm always wanting to push push forward so I'm, I'm fully focused on Mausch and uh, I, I see so much so much potential in this space and I really just see this as just the beginning um, I want I've, I've set very very high goals yeah. for us to for us to achieve um, and I think that's important not not to get not to get comfortable, uh, like I was saying before, not to be like okay, you know what we've got this mission star, and we've got it for this menu. Let's just sit on this menu. Let's play safe. It's like no, we we're being aggressive about it, and we want to we want to we want to get better. We want our service to be tighter. We want um, our cooking to be tighter, to be more precise. This is, I think I think it's very very easy to fall into that kind of into that pattern of being of getting comfortable yeah and that's one thing I want to make sure that we that we don't get is is uh, is comfortable mm -hmm. and I think we again because I have such an amazing team there's 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 such a there's, there's such a good balance between us all being very close and being friendly but when it's time to like be serious everybody knows that there's there's a line just not to cross and yeah. we know like it's time to just focus and we all share the same goal which I think is important, um, but yeah, we are we are constantly constantly pushing. I think this year is going to be uh, an amazing year. For yeah. Marsh. And being in this building, obviously, it's um, so the Blue Mountain School is actually owned by uh, how, I don't know how to pronounce it, Hostum, a, a, a fashion brand essentially. Yeah. What are the terms and conditions on you being here? Is is there any sort of concern of what this building might become, or is this like a a permanent installation for them and, and they're happy to have you here for the foreseeable as well. Yeah, so so the building the building is owned by by James Brown and yep. his family and we are one of the projects within Blue Mountain School. Um yes, we, we, we are here we are here long term. Great. Um it is it's it's such a it's such a um, it's such a such a an amazing working relationship. Um working with working with James actually because he has such a like such an amazing um, eye and I've, I've never seen somebody who can I mean when I look around this space it's just it's just it just fits in with exactly what what we're trying to do in the kitchen yeah. fits in exactly you know when you look around this room there's not like we have big chandeliers that are coming down or th anything that's anything that's too distracting you have plastered walls mm -hmm. um, and everything everything just creates this moment that when you sit down it's all it's all just very very focused on what you're eating and and what you're drinking and yeah. the experience you know, the experience that you're in so it's 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 great to work with him and and um, yeah I see us working together for many years that's great and have they made any design alterations since you got here and is that something that is ongoing or have they did they sort of create this space and then leave you to it um, no, it's it's constantly ongoing. I, I I think I think what's great is that James is he's he's very, he's, he's super passionate about about Mausch. so we have um, conversations every single day. I see I see James every single day. So it's not just it's not just it's, it's not just uh, it's not just the owner of the building and then steps away. It's 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 uh, constant conversations, and I like that. That's that's nice because, as I said, when you when you're thinking about the whole project, it's not just. It's not one person who can't just think about everything. Mm -hmm. It's it's if you if you if you bring to the table somebody who has incredible incredible knowledge about design, uh, art, fashion, and you incorporate that with with our food, with the wine, I think that's just it's just an yeah. amazing team, isn't it? Yeah, there's certainly room to be blown away for guests. It's, it's yeah. very incredible. 
yeah yeah great it's pretty special well, anyway it's been absolutely amazing talking to you really insightful I've learned so much, much and thank you for taking the time thank you so much Tammy. Thanks for coming. we hope you enjoyed this interview and if you have any comments feel free to tweet us or comment on the post uh, we're making all of our interviews available to download and finally if you like what we do whether it's our podcast or our videos or even our features please head over to our patreon page and support us there this episode of Grilled by the Staff Canteen is sponsored by Westlands, the premier specialist British grower of microleaf, growing cresses, edible flowers, inspired leaves, sea herbs and specialty tomatoes. Visit www.westlandsuk.co.uk to find out more.